History can leave a permanent stain in time and space, and sometimes these permanent stains make known their presence, especially in a place that people went to live out their lives and die, subjected to the torture of their own mental illness and the mental illnesses of others. Tonight, we explore the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, where the darkness of its history refuses to remain in the past. The Trans-Allegheny Asylum was built between the years of 1858 and 1881 in West Virginia. Additionally, it is supposedly the largest hand-cut stone masonry building in the United States. The original psychiatric hospital opened for patients in the year 1864. The asylum was initially designed to hold up to 250 inmates, however, by 1880, it held 717. Then, in 1938, 1,661 inmates called it their home. During its peak in the 1950s, it housed 2,400 patients, making its condition poor, severely overcrowded, and unsanitary. The Trans-Allegheny Asylum's expansive property stretched a perhaps eerily 666 acres. This included the main facility, a farm, a dairy, waterworks, and a cemetery. In 1902, a gas well was also drilled on the grounds. Many unbearable horrors took place within the thickest walls of the asylum from frontal lobe lobotomies, which were procedures where a doctor quite literally used an ice pick and a hammer to chip through the back of a patient's eye socket and into the brain to scrape away connections that were thought to cause the patient mental distress to electric shock therapy. Patients endured some of the most agonizing of treatments while imprisoned within the brooding citadel. Moreover, other patients who were deemed untreatable would be locked in cages, and many of the times, they would rot physically and mentally while sitting in their own blood and excrement. Indeed, such treatments were normal at the time. And of course, with the innumerable deaths that took place in the asylum, speculations of hauntings and paranormal activity would inevitably result. Throughout the years, many visitors and trespassers have experienced the sensation of being watched and followed as they traverse the old asylum grounds, where so many suffered so long ago. Others have reported witnessing the apparitions of patients and even Civil War soldiers manifesting before their very eyes, either to act out what could have been their last actions before death, or perhaps to make an attempt to communicate with those of the present in some way. But in particular, one of the most infamous spirits that inhabits the forsaken edifice is known by the name of Lily. Although it has not been confirmed, most people have come to the conclusion that Lily was the daughter of one of the inmates, Gladys Ravenfield. After her birth, the staff named and took care of her, Meanwhile, Gladys's condition only worsened due to the severity of her treatments. She was never allowed to raise her daughter. Because Lily was most likely the product of her mother being raped, she was never formally adopted and thus became an inmate herself. Sadly, she died at an early age, confined within the heart of the asylum. Since then, her ghost wanders the now dusty and mildew-strewn halls, confused and seeking a playmate. Lily is known to pull on visitors' clothing, move toys left for her as gifts, and steal candy if left in the room. However, not every permanent resident at the Trans-Allegheny Asylum is as sweet and benevolent as Lily is. 
One spirit by the name of Ruth is one of the more violent and aggressive ones that visitors have encountered. But Ruth generally targets men, as she has developed a strong hatred towards the male sex during her lifetime. She will usually poke and pull male visitors, but has shoved a few up against a wall in the past. One of the most haunted areas in the decrepit asylum is Ward 2, which is haunted by a patient who was stabbed 17 times and left to die all by himself. Sometimes over the dead stillness, his unrequited screams and cries for clemency can be heard, as if he is still trying to evade the one who murdered him. On the third floor of the asylum, one of the most notable ghosts is one by the name of Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a nurse throughout her life. Now, many report hearing her by the nurse's station. Sometimes her wraith even opens and closes doors. And last, but certainly not least, there is another sorrowful spirit that remains within Trans Allegheny. He is a spirit who goes by the name of Dean. Dean was a patient who suffered an anguishing fate. One day, two other fellow patients decided to attack Dean. They brutally assaulted him, then attempted to hang him. However, Dean refused and tried to escape. This only furthered the wrath of the two malevolent patients, who then dragged him into a room and placed one of the bed's legs on Dean's head. As Dean lay helpless and unconscious, the two patients then jumped on the bed, horribly crushing Dean's skull and ending his life. But despite the gruesome death, Dean's spirit is said to be peaceful and does not pose harm to visitors. Other spirits of the decaying sanatorium include former Civil War veteran patients on the third story and many, many more. To this day, the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum is known as one of the most haunted places in the world. Its crumbling structure stands as a doleful and grisly reminder of what it was originally built for, and the terrors that went on throughout the many years of its operation. However, now it is a place of abandonment, harboring the souls of those who died within its oppressive walls, just waiting for anyone who's brave enough to pay the old asylum grounds a visit. Before we'd go, I'd like to give a very special shout out to Blue Apron for sponsoring this episode and helping to support my content and keep it coming for all of you. Blue Apron is a meal delivery service that delivers farm fresh ingredients for gourmet meals to your door every single week. All the ingredients are top notch, come in a durable refrigerated box in case you're not able to get to the box right away and they're perfectly portioned, so there's no waste of food and no trips to the grocery store. And just for all my fans, Blue Apron is giving the first 100 of you to use the link below to sign up $50 off your first two weeks with Blue Apron. Whether you choose their two-person plan or their family plan, you're going to be cooking incredible meals with the help of detailed recipes. I've been using Blue Apron myself for years now, and it's taught me so much about cooking and even creating my own meals from scratch. And Blue Apron makes it convenient to get the food you want to eat, allowing you to customize orders in advance. Whether you want something with pork or you prefer vegetarian options, you can make pretty much any combination. Among their already large selection of recipes, Blue Apron continues to add new recipes all the time, so you're always able to try new things and learn new techniques to better the quality of your cuisine. And they ship to almost any country. Blue Apron is a phenomenal company that utilizes local suppliers for your food, so you're not only enhancing your life, but you're helping to sustain the suppliers that need and deserve it the most. So again, check out the link in the description below and join me in the Blue Apron community. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel now because you won't want to miss what's next. Also, feel free to check out another one of my videos and I'll see you 
next time.